So, g'day, I'm Dr. Paul Mason. <laughs> In a previous lecture, I discussed citation bias, where authors of expert review papers can cherry pick the literature, ignoring studies that they don't like. Well, publication bias, failure to publish research findings at all, is potentially an even bigger problem. Studies with negative findings, in fact, are almost four times less likely to be published than those with positive findings. This means valuable scientific information which could alert us to ineffective or even harmful treatments may be going to waste. Take, for example, the Minnesota coronary experiment a randomised control trial conducted from 1968 to 1973. It looked at a population of some 9,000 nursing home and mental hospital residents who were randomly allocated to either a control diet or a diet in which corn oil and margarine replaced saturated fat. This study finished in 1973, and yet for some reason, results were not published until 1989. And even then, the data published was incomplete. Even after an inexplicable 16-year delay in publishing, important data on mortality was missing. Science journalist Gary Taubes interviewed the now deceased lead author and co-principal investigator Ivan Franz and asked about this delay in publishing. The response was disarmingly honest. We were just so disappointed in the way they turned out. The thing is, if these results had been published in a timely manner, it would have quite possibly headed off the disastrous US dietary goals. At least Ivan understood the importance of eventually publishing, even if it was too little, too late. Which is more than can be said for the other co-principal investigator on this trial the infamous Ansel Keys. Despite his role as a principal investigator, he was not listed as an author on the eventual 1989 publication. The presumed reason for this was only revealed decades later when the true findings were exposed, findings which should have sounded the death knell to Keyes' cherished lipid heart hypothesis. These findings were exposed by NIH researcher Dr Chris Ramsden. On his request, Ivan France's son located study records in the basement of his childhood home, and with the help of computer scientists, old punch cards and magnetic tapes were deciphered, and Dr Ramsden was able to expose some of the original findings. Namely, that while replacing saturated fat with seed oil did indeed lower cholesterol, it did so at the expense of increasing mortality. That is, the lower the cholesterol went, the higher the chance of death. These were the results that were so disappointing to Ivan France, and presumably so unpalatable to Ansel Keys, he didn't even want his name associated with the paper on which he was a principal investigator. Of course, modern day researchers are far more subtle in bearing unpalatable findings. Take the 700 million US dollar Women's Health Initiative Dietary Modification Trial, a massive randomised control trial which set out to test the hypothesis that reducing saturated fat in the diet would reduce heart disease. Again, the results of this study disproved the hypothesis. Going on a low-fat diet actually resulted in females with a history of heart disease having a 26% increased risk of events like heart attack. This was indeed the only significant finding of the whole study, which makes it surprising that it was the only finding that was also missing from the results table in figure three of the publication. $700 million a single significant finding, and somehow it was the only result that was not transparently presented. 
Rather, you had to go to page 661 of the publishing journal and interpret this line of obscure text, as Dr. Andreas Einfeld did, to get the truth. For these females in question, a low-fat diet increased their risk of events like heart attacks by 26%. 